Guillotine The guillotine is a device designed for carrying out executions by beheading. It consists of a tall upright frame in which a weighted and angled blade is raised to the top and suspended. The condemned person is secured at the bottom of the frame, with his or her neck held directly below the blade. The blade is then released, to fall swiftly and sever the head from the body. The device is best known for its use in France, in particular during the French Revolution, when it became a part of popular culture, and it became celebrated as the People's Avenger by supporters of the Revolution and vilified as the preeminent symbol of the reign of terror by opponents. The guillotine continued to be used long after the Revolution and remained France's standard method of judicial execution until the abolition of capital punishment with the backing of President François Mitterrand in 1981. The last person guillotined in France was Hamid Jean d'Albay, on September 10, 1977. The guillotine has also been employed in other countries. In Nazi Germany, it saw 16,500 victims. It was used as well by the Stasi in East Germany for secret executions. What it is that horrifies people changes over time. Doyle comments. Invention Dr. Antoine Louis, together with German engineer Tobias Schmidt, built a prototype for the guillotine. Schmidt recommended using an angled blade as opposed to a round one. Precursors There were other beheading machines in countries other than France before 1792. A number of countries, especially in Europe, continued to employ this method of execution into modern times. Although the guillotine was invented in the late 18th century, similar beheading machines have a longer history. The Halifax gibbet was a wooden structure of two wooden uprights, capped by a horizontal beam, of a total height of 4.5 meters, 15 feet. The blade was an axe head weighing 3.5 kilograms, 7.7 .7 pounds, attached to the bottom of a massive wooden block that slid up and down in grooves in the uprights. This device was mounted on a large square platform 1.25 meters, 4 feet, high. It is not known when the Halifax gibbet was first used. The first recorded execution in Halifax dates from 1280, but that execution may have been by sword, axe, or the gibbet. The machine remained in use until Oliver Cromwell forbade capital punishment for petty theft. It was used for the last time for the execution of two criminals on a single day, on April 30, 1650. Another early example is immortalized in the picture The Execution of Mercold Balanir to Merton in Ireland 1307 feet. As the title suggests, the victim was named Mercold Bala, and he was decapitated by equipment looking remarkably similar to the later French guillotines. Another unrelated picture depicts an execution with elements of both a guillotine-style device and a traditional beheading. While the condemned is lying on a bench, a device holds an axe head in position above the neck. The executioner, who is shown wielding a large hammer, strikes down on the mechanism and drives the blade down. Traditional execution by decapitation by sword or axe were notably gruesome and the device depicted in the illustration may have been conceived in an attempt to improve the accuracy and effectiveness. No reference to its actual use has been found. French Revolution On October 10, 1789, Joseph Ignace Guillotin, a French physician, stood before the National Assembly and proposed the following six articles in favor of the reformation of capital punishment. Article 1 all offences of the same kind will be punished by the same type of punishment irrespective of the rank or status of the guilty party. Article 2. Whenever the law imposes the death penalty, irrespective of the nature of the offence, the punishment shall be the same, decapitation, effected by means of a simple mechanism. Article 3. The punishment of the guilty party shall not bring discredit upon or discrimination against his family. Article 4. No one shall reproach a citizen with any punishment imposed on one of his relatives. Such offenders shall be publicly reprimanded by a judge. Article 5. The condemned person's property shall not be confiscated. Article 6. At the request of the family, the corpse of the condemned man shall be returned to them for burial and no reference to the nature of death shall be registered. Sensing the growing discontent, 
Louis XVI banned the use of the braking wheel. In 1791, as the French Revolution progressed, the National Assembly researched a new method to be used on all condemned people regardless of class. Their concerns contributed to the idea that the purpose of capital punishment was simply to end life rather than to inflict pain. A committee was formed under Antoine Louis, physician to the King and secretary to the Academy of Surgery. Guillotin was also on the committee. The group was influenced by the Italian mania, or manager, the Scottish maiden and the Halifax gibbet, which was fitted with an axe head weighing 7 pounds 12 ounces, 3.5 kilograms. While these prior instruments usually crushed the neck or used blunt force to take off a head, devices also usually used a crescent blade and a lunette, a hinged two-part yoke to immobilize the victim's neck. Le Quiente, an officer of the Strasbourg Criminal Court, designed a beheading machine and employed Tobias Schmidt, a German engineer and harpsichord maker, to construct a prototype. Antoine Louis is also credited with the design of the prototype. An apocryphal story claims that King Louis XVI, an amateur locksmith, recommended that a triangular blade with a beveled edge be used instead of a crescent blade, but it was Schmidt who suggested placing a straight blade at a 45-degree angle. The first execution by guillotine was performed on highwayman Nicolas Jacques Pelletier on April 25, 1792. He was executed in front of what is now the City Hall of Paris, Place de l'Hôtel de Ville. All citizens deemed guilty of a crime punishable by death were from then on executed there, until the scaffold was moved on August 21 to the Place du Carousel. The machine was successful as it was considered a humane form of execution, contrasting with the methods used in pre-revolutionary, Ancien Régime France. In France, before the guillotine, members of the nobility were beheaded with a sword or axe, which often took two or more blows to kill the condemned, while commoners were usually hanged, which could take minutes or longer. In the early phase of the French Revolution, the slogan A la lantern, in English, to the lamppost, string them up, or hang them, had become a symbol of popular justice in revolutionary France. The revolutionary radicals hanged officials and aristocrats from street lanterns. Other more gruesome methods of executions were also used such as the wheel or burning of the stake. The condemned or their family would sometimes pay the executioner to ensure that the blade was sharp, to achieve a quick and relatively painless death. The guillotine was thus perceived to deliver an immediate death without risk of suffocation. Furthermore, having only one method of civil execution was seen as an expression of equality among citizens. The guillotine was then the only civil legal execution method in France until the abolition of the death penalty in 1981, apart from certain crimes against the security of the state, or for the death sentences passed by military courts, which entailed execution by firing squad. Reign of Terror The period from June 1793 to July 1794 in France is known as the Reign of Terror or simply the Terror. The upheaval following the overthrow of the monarchy, invasion by foreign monarchist powers and the revolt in the Vendée combined to throw the nation into chaos and the government into paranoia. Most of the democratic reforms of the revolution were suspended and the revolutionary tribunal sentenced thousands to the guillotine. The first political prisoner to be executed was Colonel d'Angremont of the National Guard, followed soon after by the king's trusted collaborator in his ill-fated attempt to moderate the revolution, Arnaud de la Porte, both in 1792. Former King Louis XVI and Queen Marie Antoinette were executed in 1793. Maximilien Robespierre became one of the most powerful men in the government, and the figure most associated with the terror. Nobility and commoners, intellectuals, politicians and prostitutes, all were liable to be executed on little or no grounds. Suspicion of crimes against liberty was enough to earn one an appointment with Madame Guillotine, or the National Razor. Estimates of the death toll range between 16,000 and 40,000. At this time, Paris executions were carried out in the Place de la Revolution, former Place Louis XV and current Place de la Concorde. The guillotine stood in the corner near the Hotel Crillon where the statue of Brest can be found today. 
For a time, executions by guillotine were a popular entertainment that attracted great crowds of spectators. Vendors sold programs listing the names of those scheduled to die. Many people came day after day and vied for the best locations from which to observe the proceedings. Knitting women, tricotuses, formed a cadre of hardcore regulars, inciting the crowd. Parents often brought their children. By the end of the terror, the crowds had thinned drastically. Repetition had staled even this most grisly of entertainments, and audiences grew bored. Eventually, the National Convention had enough of the terror, partially fearing for their own lives, and turned against Maximilien Robespierre. He was arrested, and on July 28, 1794, was executed in the same fashion as those whom he had condemned. This arguably ended the terror, as the French expressed their discontent with Robespierre's policy by guillotining him. Retirement After the French Revolution, the executions began again in the city centre. On February 4, 1832, the guillotine was moved behind the Church of Saint Jacques, just before being moved again, to the Grand Roquette Prison, on November 29, 1851. On August 6, 1909, the guillotine was used on the junction of the Boulevard Arago and the Rue de la Santé, behind the prison which bears the latter street's name. The last public guillotining in France was of Eugen Wiedmann, who was convicted of six murders. He was beheaded on June 17, 1939 outside the prison Saint-Pierre, Rue Georges Clemenceau 5 at Versailles, which is now the Palais de Justice. A number of problems with that execution, inappropriate behavior by spectators, incorrect assembly of the apparatus, and the fact that it was secretly filmed, caused the authorities to conduct future executions in the prison courtyard. The guillotine remained the official method of execution in France until the death penalty was abolished in 1981. The final guillotinings in France before abolition were those of child murderer Christian Renucci on July 28, 1976 and torture murderer Hamid Ajan Darby on September 10, 1977. In the late 1840s the Tussaud brothers Joseph and Francis, gathering relics for Madame Tussaud's wax museum, visited the aged Henry Clement Sanson, grandson of the executioner Charles-Henri Samson, from whom they obtained parts, the knife and lunette of one the original guillotines used during the Age of Terror. The executioner had pawned his guillotine, and got into woeful trouble for alleged trafficking in municipal property. Elsewhere The Scottish Maiden, supposedly based on the Halifax gibbet, was introduced to Edinburgh by James Douglas, 4th Earl of Morton in the 16th century and remained in use until 1716. The scaffold itself is now housed in the National Museum of Scotland. In Antwerp, Belgium, the last person to be beheaded was Francis Cull. Convicted for robbery with murder, he underwent his punishment on May 8, 1856. During the period from March 19, 1798, until March 30, 1856, there were 19 beheadings in Antwerp 19. In Germany, where the guillotine is known as Fallbeel, falling axe, it was used in various German states from the 17th century onwards, becoming the preferred method of execution in Napoleonic times in many parts of Germany. The guillotine and the firing squad were the legal methods of execution during the German Empire, 1871-1918, and the Imar Republic, 1919-1933. The original German guillotines resembled the French Berger 1872 model but they eventually evolved into more specialized machines largely built of metal with a much heavier blade enabling shorter uprights to be used. Accompanied by a more efficient blade recovery system and the eventual removal of the tilting board, or bascule, this allowed a quicker turnaround time between executions, the condemned being decapitated either face up or face down, depending on how the executioner predicted they would react to the side of the machine. Those deemed likely to struggle were backed up from behind a curtain to shield their view of the device. As such the blades of some models were covered by a metal screen to hide it from sight. In 1933, Adolf Hitler had a guillotine constructed and tested. He was impressed enough to order 20 more constructed and pressed into immediate service. 
Nazi records indicate that between 1933 and 1945, 16,500 people were executed by guillotine in Germany and Austria. It was used for the last time in West Germany in 1949, in the execution of Richard School, and in East Germany in 1966, in the execution of Horst Fischer. In Switzerland it was used for the last time by the canton of Oppelden in the execution of murderer Hans Vollmeder in 1940. In Sweden, where beheading became the mandatory method of execution in 1866, the guillotine replaced manual beheading in 1903 and was used only once, in the execution of murderer Alfred Ander in 1910 at Langholmen Prison, Stockholm. Incidentally he was also the last person executed in Sweden before capital punishment was abolished in that country in 1921. In South Vietnam, after the Diem regime enacted the 10-59 decree in 1959, mobile special military courts dispatched to the countryside to intimidate the rural peoples used guillotines belonging to the former French colonial power to carry out death sentences on the spot. One such guillotine is still on show at the War Remnants Museum in Ho Chi Minh City. In 1996 in the U.S., Georgia State Representative Doug Teeper unsuccessfully sponsored a bill to replace the state's electric chair with the guillotine. Living Heads From its first use, there has been debate as to whether the guillotine always provided a swift death as guillotine had hoped. With previous methods of execution intended to be painful, there was little concern about the suffering inflicted. As the guillotine was invented specifically to be humane the issue was seriously considered. The blade cuts quickly enough so that there is relatively little impact on the brain case, and perhaps less likelihood of immediate unconsciousness than with a more violent decapitation, or long drop hanging. Audiences to guillotinings told numerous stories of blinking eyelids, speaking, moving eyes, movement of the mouth, even an expression of unequivocal indignation on the face of the decapitated Charlotte Corday when her cheek was slapped. The following report was written by a Dr. B. Rur, who experimented with the head of a condemned prisoner by the name of Henri Langui, on June 28, 1905. Anatomists and other scientists in several countries have tried to perform more definitive experiments on severed human heads as recently as 1956. Inevitably, the evidence is only anecdotal. What appears to be a head responding to the sound of its name, or to the pain of a pin prick, may be only random muscle twitching or automatic reflex action, with no awareness involved. At the very least, it seems that the massive drop in cerebral blood pressure would cause a victim to lose consciousness in a few seconds. Names for the guillotine During the span of its usage, the French guillotine has gone by many names, some of which include these. La Montia Regret, The Regretful Climb, La Rasoir National, The National Razor, La Vazistas ou La Lacan, The Fan Light, La Vouve, The Widow, La Moulin A Silence, The Silence Mill, Louisette or Louisan, from the name of prototype designer Antoine Louis, Madame La Guillotine, Mirabel, from the name of Mirabeau, La Bacane, The Machine. La Dean des Haber, Dean of Haber, La Massacotte, the Cutter, La Cravate a Capit, the Necktie of Capit, Capit being Louis XVI, La Recorse Sers Patriotique, the Patriotic Shortener, La Demi Lune, the Half Moon, La Boys de Justice, Woods of Justice, La Bascule Charlotte, Charlotte's Rocking Chair, La Pre Guancourt des Assassins, the Guancourt Prize for Murderers. Guillotine Types <laughs> 